What is up everybody and welcome back to Tattoo Critiques. I'm Pony Lawson and what we like to do here is talk about tattoos, whether they're good, bad, or downright ugly. And today we're gonna be going into apprentice tattoos. You know those tattoos that your cousins, neighbors, uncles, and dog walker offer to give you for free? Yeah, we're gonna be diving into that. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. Once again, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Before we get started, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, I would like to give a huge shout out to the team over at Mad Rabbit for sponsoring this channel. They've got an amazing line of products for all your tattoo needs, so be sure to check them out. I will leave a link in the description below. All right, let's check out this first tattoo. This first one is sent in by Nina, and Nina, you sent in this black and white rose tattoo that looks reminiscent of this tutorial video I made. We're gonna try something new today, and that's tattooing one of these fake skins. Well, looks like you may have missed it, so be sure to check that out. And to anyone else who wants to learn about reels and roses, I'll leave the link in the description below. But right out of the gate, I think this thing looks pretty flat, and I think that's because you decided to shade every area of this rose. When it comes to tattooing realistic roses, you really need to understand light and shadow and the use of negative space. Using negative space really helps convey the three-dimensional aspects because it shows where light is hitting the object, and really helps emphasize those shadows. There are parts of this rose where it looks like you tried to soften some of these petals' edges, but in reality, it just looks like two of those petals are kind of just blurring together. Together. There's not really any kind of border to separate these petals. It just really feels like these petals are all on the same level. I would personally use a small liner to give all of these petals an edge. Don't be afraid of putting light outlines where they're needed to hold things together. The way you hide those outlines are pushing shades into the petal away from that outline. This will also give these petals some shape as well as some nice dimension. Another issue I have is the shading around the border of this tattoo. As it sits right now, it's just very difficult to see where that light source is coming from. If you were to open up some of those petals on the top and just have the shading around those parts in particular, it would have gave this tattoo a lot more three-dimensional feel. On that note, you don't really need all that shading around these leaves either, as the leaves have a dark border, so you don't really need that shadow. It's just going to give you an overall cleaner effect. I think the best thing about this tattoo is your leaves. It does look like you've got some cleanish lines in there, but again, it could use some work. Again, I think the shading around these leaves is almost unnecessary, and it's really just hiding those details. So Nina, work on your light and shadows and the use of negative space. Also, be sure to check out my rose tutorial video where I go a lot further in depth on almost this exact design. But thank you so much for sending that in and letting me take a peek. Up next, we've got one sent in from Murby. And Murby, you say you've been tattooing for about seven months. You sent in what looks to be some sort of llama potion, or maybe it's an alpaca. I don't know. I don't know exactly what that potion would do, but let's talk about it. So when I first look at this, I think this thing is done pretty well, but there are a few areas that kind of bother me. The first thing is that purple outline. I probably would have done away with that altogether. It's not really adding anything to the overall tattoo, and it's really just distracting your eyes from the rest of the design. Another thing I'm not really a huge fan of are these bubbles, because they definitely do not look like bubbles. I think these black outlines that are running through them is really hindering the design. Get rid of those altogether and make a nice little glare inside those bubbles and you'll be good to go. The cork itself doesn't really look like a cork, it kind of looks like a giraffe pattern, but maybe that was the idea. Or maybe this is a potion to give you a long neck. I don't know why that would be useful, but I guess I can see where Daddy Longneck gets it from. Lots of jealous ass painters always talking. I think your technical application is pretty good, and these colors work really well with each other. But I do think you need to work on tightening up these designs and asking yourself if adding these additional lines are really necessary. But thank you so much, Murby, for setting that in. All right, the next tattoo sent in is from Mark. And Mark, you sent in this red and yellow skull tattoo with, oh, would you look at that, another potion. And this one actually has some decent bubbles. Take a note, Murby. I think initially this could be a really cool design, but it does look like a lot of stuff just kind of crammed together. First off, let's take a look at this bottle. I think the reds and yellows in there are almost unnecessary, and it's distracting from the actual skull itself. I would have just removed that color altogether and maybe added a light blue and keep the rest skin tone just so it looks transparent. I think the liquid in this glass looks a bit better than the liquid from the last tattoo we looked at, uh, but still could use some work. However, the tentacles just come off a bit too dark for my taste. I do like the tentacles themselves, but I do think it gets a little muddy where those darker areas of those tentacles meet. I think just extending a little bit of that light purple down in there would have made those tentacles a bit more clear. When we go to the edge of the bottle, if you look down toward the bottom of the right side where it's sitting on top of that wheel, it just gets very messy. I think some of those shadows to the right side of that bottle, again, are a bit unnecessary. Speaking of unnecessary, I think some of those outlines in the skull are unnecessary as well. I'm not really sure what's going on with their cheekbone. Again, it would have just looked a bit cleaner had those outlines not been there. If we're comparing corks with the previous tattoo, I think this one does look a little more 
corky. I do think the previous tattoo's outlines were a bit cleaner than this one, especially when it comes to around that bottle. I don't really think that any of these shadows are necessary in this tattoo. If you were to have a nice, thick, bold outline around each individual item of this piece, it would have been a lot cleaner to read. So once again, Mark, I do like the design, and I think you've got potential for good overall compositions. However, similar to the previous tattoo, you do have some unnecessary elements in this thing that are almost hindering the readability. But once again, thank you so much, Mark, for sending that in, and good luck on your apprenticeship journey. All right, this next tattoo is sent in from Felipe Miranda. And Felipe, you sent in this beautiful face of what looks to be almost like a double exposure. Overall, I really enjoyed this tattoo. I think you did a great job with the execution. I think when it comes to doing tattoos like this, one of the hardest things to do is make these pieces look identical. And I think you did a pretty good job there. There are only a few minor differences that I notice, like the shadowing underneath the eyebrows. In some parts, it's darker than the others. When we look at the right eye, you notice that it's a darker shade underneath the eyebrow than it is on the image on the bottom. And that same thing could be said for the set of eyes on the left. And that's something you really have to pay attention to in portraits, because one minor shading mistake can really make it look like a completely different person altogether. I think my favorite part about this tattoo is the eyebrows. I've mentioned in a previous video that that's something I personally struggle with, but I think you did a really exceptional job with these, and they really look realistic. And I absolutely love the stipple shading that you've got on the outside of the face. It really shows some good form. Generally, I'd like to see some sort of outline around the outside of the face, but with this tattoo in particular, I really don't think you need it. You've got enough dark shading in that face to really retain that clean edge without having to have an outline. And I think you did a great job with limiting your use of white, only putting it where it's needed in the eyes and other parts that are reflective or shiny. So Felipe, once again, beautiful work, and thank you so much for sending that in. All right, the next tattoo sent in is from David Barajas. And David, you sent in a cute little Courage the Cowardly Dog. So I've never seen Courage the Cowardly Dog, but I am familiar with the character, and I think it did a good job depicting him. The first thing that comes to mind when I look at this tattoo is, I wish there were some sort of thicker outline around the entire perimeter. That's typically where my brain goes when I look at any kind of animation style tattoo. I know that probably would have been a bit difficult with all these little nooks and crannies, but one way we could have solved that is by making this tattoo bigger overall. Now I know we don't always have that option when it comes to client preferences, but even at its current size, I think we could have gotten away with just a little bit thicker to make those pinks pop even more. With that out of the way, let's take a dive into the dog's mouth. Now I don't remember what Coward's tongue actually looks like, but this does seem a bit dark and a little patchy. That patchiness kind of continues throughout the tattoo and again, I think something that would have helped with that is making this tattoo just a bit bigger. Another reason I think that tongue is just a bit too dark is it's almost the same exact color as the outline. When it comes to the teeth, I think you may have added one too many colors to those teeth, almost giving them a three-dimensional feel, which doesn't really make sense because the rest of the tattoo has this two-dimensional feel, so it doesn't really fit. I would have just left those areas looking more flat, like the rest of the tattoo. When we come up to the eyes, you see just a little bit of overrun with that blacking onto the other eye. I do see some line inconsistencies throughout this tattoo, for one on the top of the eye and that outermost tooth. So David, I don't think this is a bad tattoo by any means. I think if anybody were to see this tattoo, they would think it's a simple one to pull off. I think your biggest enemy here is the size. You've got a lot of detail in this tattoo, and I think you did a good job, especially when it comes to all those little spikes. However, it would have been easier to control all those outlines had it just been a bit bigger. If it is a client issue and they're not letting you make it any bigger, try redesigning the image from scratch. You could easily remove some of these obstacles to make it easier on yourself and make the tattoo cleaner overall. But thank you so much, David, for sending it in and letting me talk about it. All right, guys, each week I like to give you my favorite tattoo of the episode. And this week, this one was sent in by Felipe with this double exposure portrait face thing. From top to bottom, this thing is pretty stunning, especially for an apprentice tattoo. The eyes are piercing, the shading is great, and you've really kept this thing clean without having to use many outlines, which is impressive. The ability to hold back with those whites is something that a lot of tattooers struggle with, and I have to say I am pretty damn jealous about your eyebrow skills. So maybe we can link up and you can show me a thing or two. So once again, Felipe, excellent work and congratulations on being my favorite this week. And now one of my favorite parts of this series is shining a light on an artist who I think you should all be following. And that artist is Noe Blossom out of Bologna, Italy. Is it Bologna? Bologna? Or Bologna? I don't know. Regardless, Noe's work is absolutely solid. And she does a lot of things that we talked about in this episode exceptionally well. When you look at her potions and bottles of liquid, you can't really get much better. The liquid looks like liquid. The bottles look clear and transparent and actually look like bottles. Not to mention, the bubbles in these bottles are exactly what I was talking about earlier. These are all great references if you're trying to mimic that style. Another thing that we talked about that she does so well is controlling that use of white and only putting it in where necessary. How well an artist utilizes whites is generally a good indication on whether or not you're looking at a trained professional or an amateur and she is definitely a professional. And I don't even want to talk about her line weight because it's just, ugh. 
So good. And I cannot believe she's only got 6,000 followers. So let's do this together. Everybody, I need you to head on over to her Instagram page, give her a follow, show her some love, and let her know I sent you. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. And as always, if you'd like to see your tattoos critiqued here, you can do so by sending them to ponycritiques at gmail.com. And as always, I will see you all next week.